Believe it or not, at the beginning of the game, Bennett was actually considered a low tier character. But as soon as we got an idea of how the game actually worked, Bennett shot his way up the rankings and for a long time was considered unequivocally the very best character in the game. And to this day, he is still a strong contender for the top spot. There's also quite a lot of controversy still regarding his constellations, particularly his C6, and even regarding his build path. And we're gonna cover all of it in this video. He's being given away for free this patch, so even if you've been as unlucky as Benny Boy himself, it is finally time for you to build him right. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Bennett is an off-field pyro healer and buffer who does a decent chunk of damage with his burst if built properly. He can actually be a very competent on-field damage dealer if you want to do that. But to be honest, this is not giving him enough credit. His buffing capability, along with the role consolidation, of his healing makes him one of the most overtuned units in the game to the point where many people if not most people truly believe that Hoyoverse made a big mistake when making this character so let's talk about exactly why he's so good Bennett is uncontestedly the best buffer in the game. Nobody gives stats like this. Through his burst Fantastic Voyage, he gives over 100% of his base attack to the character standing in his burst. It's such a ridiculous amount of attack that it single-handedly makes attack substats on characters you use with Bennett significantly worse. He also gives a ton of healing, which provides excellent roll consolidation, and it's a value really unmatched by any other healer. And the combination with his buff gives him value really unmatched by any other healer in the game. He's also extremely free to play friendly with his C1 being the only constellation that is required to get pretty close to his full potential. His pyro element is actually really good for a lot of team synergies, although it can be a negative for others. He does pretty solid damage if you build him for that. When my Bennett crits, his burst does a cool 40k, which is nice, and that's unbuffed. His burst also applies pyro to your active character in the circle, which can be good for cleansing debuffs on your character, such as freeze or a talent skill cooldown debuff from the abyss, but it also can be a negative as well as sometimes applying pyro to yourself just leaves you open to getting vaporized or something. His other pro is that he synergizes extremely well with every character in the game that scales off of attack, and his con is that characters that don't scale with attack, although there aren't that many, really don't benefit from him at all. Unlike shielders, he doesn't give interruption resistance, so if you're using a character that doesn't have it, you have to be more careful. And and he also provides the infamous circle impact, so if your character wants to take advantage of his healing or buffing, they have to stand within his circle. Now that we have an idea of his pros and cons, let's talk about his value and power level. This is going to be a short section. He truly is one of the closest units to a must build in the game. Not every single team will use him, but the odds of you constructing two to three Spiral Abyss teams and none of them using Bennett are really, really low. Massive, massive value as long as you're building at least one character that scales off of attack, even if just to have the pyro elemental application for Abyss floors that need it. So value, power level, both are sky high. And as far as how he feels, to me, he feels really great to use. He's a very simple character. He's not very skill expressive, but his heals are very substantial. His damage is decent, and you really, really notice the attack when you're standing in a circle. So he feels like a very impactful character. So as we mentioned before, he basically scales with any character that uses attack. So rather than going through every single team, I'm just going to go through my list of characters and talk about how they may or may not use him. He's one of Raiden's best team best teammates when you're using Hyper or if you're using National. He's almost a staple on Wanderer teams. Ayaka doesn't usually want to run Bennett, but she can if you need Pyro for that part of the Abyss. And it also is part of her highest damage per screenshot variants. You can kind of do a Mono Cryo with Bennett as your defensive unit. Very good for boss killing. Before Dendro, he was part of Kaching's teams. Now she doesn't really use him anymore. Al Hyphen being Dendro is one of the new characters that they work that they made specifically to not work Bennett. With Bennett, you're pretty much never going to run him with Al Hytham. That's the same with Nahida, with Tainari, with Nilu. As you can see throughout Sumeru, they worked really hard to make as few characters work with Bennett as possible. Ayato doesn't need to use Bennett, but it is part of his highest damaging teams and some of his best teams as well. Kokomi is sort of a competing slot for Bennett, both being healers, so he obviously wouldn't use them together. 
together. He is part of Yoimiya's best team. He is actually really good with Hu Tao, surprisingly, although Hu Tao does want to stay below 70% HP. You can get your highest damage through Hu Tao. And although Hu Tao doesn't scale directly with attack, well, actually, she does scale with attack, but she gets so much attack from her HP that Bennett doesn't provide as much value to her as others. But if you need a comfy Hu Tao team, like if the Abyss is particularly punishing, or if you just want to do max damage possible, then Bennett is actually a solid choice for Hu Tao. Good synergy with Fischl, because Fischl is able to snapshot Bennett's buff. Snapshotting means after you place down the burst, you can use Fischl's skill on top, and Fischl will get the attack bus buff for the whole rotation. So even after Bennett's expires, Fischl still gets the buff. C6 Bennett is necessary for Razor's best team using Burgeon. Check out my video, Razor video if you want to learn more about that. Kave, Yao Yao, Candice, don't really use them that much. Singcho is often paired with the com with Bennett as together with the three, they make up what's commonly referred to as the national team core. These three have really fantastic synergy as Bennett is able to buff Shang Ling's Pyronado. Shang Ling, similar to what I explained with Fischl, is able to snapshot Bennett's buff and Bennett is able to generate a high amount of energy that should have been in his pros section for Shang Ling to allow her to build not as much energy as she would have otherwise. And Sing Cho, although he doesn't synergize that well with Bennett because his buff does not snapshot, the Pyro Hydro core will often lend itself to team synergies. They'll often end up being on the same team anyways, such as with Raiden National on this team or other variants with Sucrose. Eula can use Bennett for some of her highest damaging teams, although Zhongli is, is generally comfier. Bennett is really great too. Melt Ganyu, the best version of Ganyu for most scenarios, uses Bennett and it's really, really required. Linny's best team also using Bennett. Same with Dia, assuming you're using her as an on-fielder. Klee also uses Bennett. So does Diluc. So does Rosaria for Melt teams. So does Kaya and both Kaya and Rosaria also snapshot the buff. Same with Beto, also snapshots the buff. Kujo Sara, often used with Bennett. And we're pretty much at the end. You know, Yanfei does as well. A few of these characters don't know well can pre C6, but you're better off getting her a C6 and using her with Goro. So hopefully that just shows you how many teams that Bennett is actually used on. And if you're using any of those characters, most of the time you're going to be want to build, building up your Benny boy. So those are Bennett's buffing teams. Let's talk about what you're going to be using for his personal damage. Double Hydro with Shang Ling is going to be his best team, especially if you have C6 Bennett. The double Hydro gives you enough Hydro to actually vaporize with both Bennett and Shang Ling's hits. So he will actually do a ton of damage. And this is actually a really, really good team. Yilan is also going to be able to reverse vape some of her skills. And so is Sing Cho. So overall, and Bennett creates a team where you can swap in and out of characters, allowing you to funnel more energy to Zhang Ling and Sing Cho to Yilan. So you can run all of your characters on more damaging options, allowing to raise this team DPS up quite a bit. If you don't have C6, you have the option of running Thundering Fury on Bennett to get even more skill procs because Thundering Fury is the artifact set that reduces the skill cooldown. So having Electro characters in there, such as Fischl or Beto or both, will allow you to get a lot of those Thundering Fury procs and it actually does really good damage as well. In terms of how to build him, he is actually one of the characters that does benefit from going to level 90. He gets more base attack, which will give you more of a buff. It's not as important as other characters, such as characters that use Aggravate, like Sino or Kaching, or Spread, like Alhytham or Nahida or Tainari, or other Dendro Bloom reactions, such as Nilu. But once you're kind of done getting those characters to level 90, taking characters like Bennett to level 90 is your next best choice. For talents, the main thing you want to do is get his burst up as high as possible. It is one of the talents that you can consider crowning. I have not done it yet, but I probably will at some point. You don't really need to level up his normal attack and skill unless you're going to be using Bennett as an on-fielder, in which case getting his skill up will be very important to do your damage. I have his normal attack just because I need to break some elemental shields here and there, and I have C6, so I might as well get a bit of pyro damage bonus for his normal attack when I end up using it. Let's just get that up one more time. For his weapons, the number one name of the game is base attack, and this is not to be confused with attack percent. So a sword like the Katsuburi whatever Ishin, although it gives attack percent, it's base attack is relatively low and his buff only comes from the base attack which is the base attack from Bennett himself plus the base attack of the weapon you're using. That being said, it's very important to give Bennett enough energy recharge. So if you're running him on a team where he can't use very many skills per rotation, running something like the Skyward Blade is going to give you better results than something like the Aquila Favonia. Even though the Aquila Favonia has the higher base attack, the difference between the between two stat sticks like this, where the Skyward Blade having 608 base attack and the Aquila 
Favonia at level 90. I think it has 674 or something like that. It's about a 5% damage difference. If you want to check out Kachang mains, they've listed all of the potential options for Bennett right here, with Miss Splitter being the number one, but usually it's going to be better off on someone else. Aquila Favonia being number two. You just have to make sure that you do have enough energy recharge for this, because if you don't have enough energy recharge, then using something that does, even something with lower base attack like the Sapwood Blade that they list right here, which by the way is his best free to play weapon because of its energy recharge and very high base attack for a four star or the skyward blade which is my favorite weapon as a general option on him although i just got this aquila favoni and i will be level 90 it for my ride and team because he doesn't need as much energy on the ride and team prototype rancor if you already have it level 90 is going to be a good choice it's just not as good as the sapwood blade because although they have the same base attack it doesn't give you the er favonia sword can be a solid option as well but for my testing the damage is actually noticeable it's about a 10 percent damage loss compared to my skyward blade it can be worth it if you're funneling other characters but i and i mean a 10 percent damage loss for my on-field character carry so i tested it with my raiden and i got my good friend flip to back things up with a little bit of math and we calc the difference between aquila and skyward at around five percent and for my testing skyward to favonius is about five percent so you want to choose the weapon that kind of maximizes your base attack while also being aware of bennett's energy needs and your other team's energy needs something like the freedom sworn is also good option if you don't need the energy and you want to buff your team because the passive can give a benefit to to your characters so if you have that you can feel free to lose it use it although the base attack is a little bit on the lower side compared to these two if you're going to be using him for his personal damage weapons like the jade cutter the haran obviously the mist splitter and even the iron sting if you're doing the thundering fury teams all are great choices for his personal damage for artifacts there's really two main choices that i would work towards for the end game the number one being the noblesse set this gives when you're using your burst damp when you're burst it gives a 20 percent attack bonus to all of your characters which is very very useful but for teams that can't use this effect you can often get quite a bit of value from the instructor set especially for something like a hu tao team or another character that cares about the em more than additional attack 120 em is a lot so it's a really good choice for your bennett if you're early game and struggling for energy the exile is a really great choice and if you're using him as your on-field dps then the thundering fury or crimson witch or the gilded dream set are great choices for you for energy recharge kaching mains has done this great sheet that you can pause or you can go to their website and check out which gives you the er personally i lean towards a higher amount of er on all my teams i run him with about 223 er i'm never really short on er when i have this much but on raiden teams i don't mind losing the 55 er because she provides more energy to the team so you just want to test it out and find for yourself often you can't choose the artifacts that you have if you don't have the right substats you may need to play around with them and speaking of substats and main stats if you're going as a support build if you're early game low investment you just want to throw on hp hp maybe healing bonus or maybe ER HP healing bonus and you just want to get as much energy recharge on your substats as possible and maybe some HP that will maximize your healing and give your team good value and it won't compromise his buffing at all it'll just be compromising his personal damage which to be honest is not super insane it's a really good high value way of building Bennett but once you get more towards the late game I like to go with attack percent pyro damage bonus and crit because his personal damage is actually relevant and you give you get quite enough healing already just from his base kit without stacking HP healing here. I very, very, very rarely find myself and my team dying because he's not healing enough. If they do die, it's because they got one shot, which stacking HP doesn't help on. He has no damage reduction. The one thing you might want to play around with is whether you go for an attack sans or an energy recharge sans. Oftentimes, if you are using a really high base attack weapon that doesn't have an ER substat like Aquila or Ali Flash, which I did forget to mention is his is technically his best four star as the Ali Flash has an absurdly high base attack for a four star. But if you're running one of those types of weapons you might want to consider an er sans and if you're running an er weapon you almost probably want to go with an attack sand for gameplay tips if you're using him as the solo pyro on a team you'll often want to start with his skill and then go into your burst so that he can catch his own energy particles but if you're using him with another pyro character such as Changling, you want to actually start with his burst then skill to funnel those energy before uh, into her into her burst if you're not sure exactly what i mean just rewatch what i just did again and, and do, do that basically you want to be using his skill and funneling particles into her burst the other thing to keep in mind is you want to burst as close to you can as you can to your other character's rotation because his burst doesn't last too too long actually a pretty decent 12 seconds but some characters have a 12 second field time for example and so you want to make sure you use it as close as you can in the rest of your rotation to when they have to go on field to make sure they maximize this for some characters it doesn't matter as
as much. So for example, although Raiden, you know, you do want to get the max field time as possible. Her damage is a bit front loaded. So it's important that she gets her first hit maximized. But if some of it falls off towards the end, it's not as big of a deal. Shangling even more so because she snapshots the burst. So as long as she uses the burst at some point within Bennett's circle, she gets the full buff. But a character like Wanderer, for example, you want to use Farozan in the rotation before Bennett so he can get the most of the burst, buffing him as possible. The other thing to keep in mind is the buff lasts just a tiny bit longer than it visually shows. I think it shows for something like 10 or 11 seconds, but it actually lasts for 12. So after it disappears, you still have just a second to take advantage of that buff and healing. All right, now for the fun bit. Should you C6 your Bennett or not? Well, let's start with his other constellations. Constellation 1 is Fantastic Voyage's attack buff no longer has an HP restriction. So basically, before you have this constellation, your characters only get a buff if their health is above 70%. And this constellation makes it so that doesn't exist. They always get the buff regardless of what HP they're at, which is really great. This does remind me of one thing that I really wanted to talk about is a lot of the... A lot of the new craftable weapons in Fontaine and a lot of Fontaine mechanics in general have this HP manipulation gimmick. But Hoyoverse is very aware of our reliance on Bennett. And so they're creating things that don't quite have the best synergy with him. So for example, this catalyst should be best in slot free to play on Wanderer. And it is, but it would be so much better if this passive was a little bit friendlier to Bennett. It creates a bond of life for 24% of max HP. And whenever the bond of life is cleared, every thousand HP cleared will give an elemental damage bonus. So this is really, really amazing, right? not quite because Bennett only heals up to equal to 70% or below. So once they hit over 70%, his healing will stop, meaning that weapons like this don't work super well with Bennett because he can't muff off them. He can't max them out. So if Hoyoverse want to, they can use this type of really sneaky, very expertly worded mechanics to reduce his future synergies. But we'll talk about that more a little later. Moving on to his second constellation, when Bennett's HP falls below 70%, his energy recharge is increased by 30%. Generally, as the healer of the team, you're not spending all that long on Bennett, so you probably won't have your HP fall too often, but and so you can't really plan around this energy recharge. So for, the, for that reason, although it's nice, it's generally not that practical because you don't plan on your Bennett falling below 70%, and so you won't be able to plan on the, having this energy recharge. You basically just have to ignore it, so not super good of a constellation. Increasing your skill level, very important for on-field DPS Bennett, but not important otherwise. Unexpected Odyssey using a normal attack attack as the second attack of passion overloads charge will perform a follow-up attack this additional attack does 135 percent of the second attack's damage another good constellation for dps bennett constellation five is really quite big three levels to your burst does increase his buffing so this is a really big deal and finally his c6 now this is the more most controversial one it used to be that everyone said do not c6 bennett absolutely not the truth is at this point 99 percent of the time it will only be a benefit characters that people often point to as it not working with are Ayaka. But the thing is, you're very rarely running Bennett with Ayaka in the first place. And even when you do, you're only ruining her normal and charge attacks. And that's actually not that big of a portion of her damage. So it's not really a big deal at all. It does ruin his synergy with characters like Kaching. But these days, Kaching is buffed so much by Dendro that not using her with Dendro and using her with Bennett instead is well and truly throwing. So this doesn't matter either. The only character will it actually matter is with Eula, is with Eula, because Eula actually has a lot of damage coming from her normals, and her normals are physical, and so they are overwritten by Bennett C6. But every single other character in the game is either not affected or is buffed by Bennett's Constellation 6, and ever since Eula, they have not released a character that was ruined by Bennett C6, so I suppose you could be safe, and just in case Hoyoverse messes up and makes a character that doesn't synergize with C6 Bennett like Eula, but they do want pre-6 C6 Bennett, you could could be safe and do that but personally i have c6 mine and i have never had any regrets and i definitely don't expect to there is one also misconception with this constellation six and it's and it's this sword claymore or polearm wielding characters inside fantastic Boy voyage radius get a 15 percent pyro damage bonus and their weapons are infused with pyro so this is actually a typo it's spe it specifies that sword claymore or polearm wielding characters get a 15 percent damage bonus the truth is bow and catalyst pyro characters get this 15% pyro damage bonus as well. So Yoimiya, Yanfei, or any other bow or catalyst characters, they still get this pyro damage bonus, but they do not get their weapons infused with pyro. Only sword claimer or polearm wielding characters do. So that's just a misconception I see 
often and it's obviously understandably misconception because it specifically only talks about these three types right here it really should also mention the fact that it gives bull bow and catalyst using characters the bonus as well one other thing i would like to mention about this is for shield breaking so when you're shield breaking cryo shields having the constellation six can actually be really nice to infuse his own normal attacks with pyro so you can apply more power to break the shield faster or whether you, you if you're using a national team you can infuse sing cho or shang ling's attacks with pyro or if you're using raiden it infuses her basic attacks with pyro and again that can help with shield breaking it also can enable or disable certain complex setups regarding swirling but i'm not going to cover those in this video there's some it's, it's very in the weeds and it's just beyond the scope of what we're going to cover today but basically you know that it enables some compositions and disables some other compositions that are more complex but they're all so specific and the benefit and loss that they provide is just not worth me talking about here right now For future prospects, I alluded to this here. So on one hand, Hoiver seems dead set on making some things not work with Bennett. But on the other hand, they just released Linny, and he also has complex HP mechanics. And they could have easily made him in such a way that he didn't work with Bennett, that he had big enough scalings that you didn't want to use him with Bennett, and that he specifically didn't get the buff because maybe something in his kit, something with his HP mechanics made it so that his pyro buff didn't work. If he was healed a certain amount, I don't know. But they could have done something to make him not work with Bennett but instead what they did was that they made Bennett a must use on his team and gave us a Bennett for free during his banner so I don't think that Hoyoverse has a plan of like shafting Bennett out and saying we don't want anyone to ever use Bennett again but just know that not every character will use Bennett the same way that they used to obviously characters scaling off of defense or HP make them not work with him but there's also some weird complex funky stuff that they can do as well for overworld and aesthetic to be honest I think his aesthetic is decent I wish his belly button wasn't showing I find that kind of weird but otherwise I actually really like his design perfect adventurer um, design to me and for the overworld to be honest he's a staple in the overworld to me his healing and buffing is so good and him combined with Kazuha can just clear mobs like Bennett provide combined with Kazuha is just insane I should have talked about this earlier but when Kazuha infuses his burst with Bennett and you combine it with other reactions it just does so much damage and even not combined with other reactions does so much damage Bennett plus Kazuha basically clears any mob in the game even in the abyss you can clear mobs with just those two especially on earlier floors so uh really really great synergy with Kazuha great synergy with Yolan and then I use Yoimi as my final team and that's my staple overworld team uh, forever so highly highly recommend building Bennett if you don't like using Bennett don't worry there are characters that don't have to use him and you and I know it does get boring to use the same characters if anyone I see people complain about that all the time but I think personally the fact that Bennett can allow so many great characters that are great in design but maybe not that powerful such as such as Dia or Jin Yan or even Diluc these characters are just characters that would be nowhere if it weren't for Bennett and because of them they can shine so I really really appreciate Bennett for that and that's how I like to use these characters right is I build them so that they can support my favorites I'm not trying to force you to use Bennett but I'm just saying that he might help you enable your favorite characters and I think that's a great thing and of course no it's not so much fun to use Bennett on every single team but hey I find it really fun that he makes my ride and do a ton of damage that he makes my Dia do acceptable damage I find that really really fun and so it just might be worth the trade-off to use our unlucky boy Benny boy anyways if you've been enjoying the video please consider subscribing we just opened up a new channel members feature on YouTube if you want to check out there's cool emojis for when we're streaming you can also check out my patreon as a way to support me if you want to join our discord we've got a great community in there and if you don't want to do any of those things that is totally fine just watching the video has been more than enough thanks again to flip for help with my calculations and thank you again for watching bye for now